Hello there. It's time for another Rambly Chad video. And this time I want to cover the new editor that we just launched last night. Yeah, I know. Another new editor. But hear me out. This last editor was honestly supposed to be it. Right? We even called it the, you know, the the birthday update because it was meant to be exactly it was meant to come out exactly one year uh on on since chibi had launched it took a little bit longer than that because there were some last minute changes that uh yeah you know i guess that's how development sort of goes doesn't it sometimes well the last editor i honestly thought that that was supposed to be it that was supposed to be the one, right? This is the birthday update after one year. We put a bunch of stuff that we learned into it. And it's time to stabilize Chibi, become mature, and stay that way for a while so that you can actually learn the app and get the most from it. Well, it didn't take long for some feedback to start kind of becoming clear. Longtime Chibi users loved it. It's, you know, it super powerful, could do a ton of things, pretty much stuff that no other tool on the market does. Pretty awesome. But newcomers were stumped. You know, they would join, see the UI, decide that they didn't want to go through the difficulty of learning a few things about it, and leave. So it's a little hard to grow an app if new users leave right away. So you know, just being honest here, Rambly Chad video style, we went back to the drawing board. And I mean, uh, I, in a few conversations, I really did have that moment where I was like, you know what, screw this. <laughs> For a while, the new editor was literally going to be a super stripped down version, just almost blank canvas, nothing else uh, UI that would have been able to do writing and prompts. And that's really about it. Along the way, I was convinced to change it up a little bit for the better. This new editor is amazing. Can't wait to show it to you. You've probably already seen it if you're a Chibi user. But what I'm, you know, back in the day, the original vision. I say that this new editor is going back to our roots because back in the day, if you don't know me, I started off basically showing the world how to do shortly AI. Back when, you know, open AI and GPT-3 were becoming a brand new, or, you know, or essentially kind of a new thing. And, you know, the world of AI writing was just getting started. And I was showcasing stuff. I was doing two, three, four videos a day, just showing how to do awesome things and shortly. And I chose shortly for a couple of main reasons. Number one is it was an unlimited plan from the start. Right? There was no other plans even. You couldn't buy like a plan that was limited or anything. And two, it was a blank canvas, basically. It was literally just a document where you could write and you could occasionally you know, hit a button and AI would finish off your thoughts. And it was really cool. So I started working really closely with the shortly AI developer. And uh, we implemented a whole bunch of my ideas. Slash instruct commands were born. Um, they originally started off as something a little bit different than that, but we eventually kind of rolled to a standardized slash instruct. And then you would give the instruction and it was, it was pretty cool. Today, we call those prompts, you know, chat GPT has kind of solidified that as a, as a thing. And, you know, all the influencers out there are kicking around that term. So prompt is basically what we call it now. And, you know, it was awesome. While other tools out there, basically, they all had forms that you'd fill out, you'd get the content, and then you'd copy and paste it into a document, you know, it was kind of, it was like one of those like freedom, you know, breath of fresh air kind of things. And that was super cool. Then conversion AI rolls around, rolls in and buys shortly AI. 
the conversion AI eventually changed into uh, Jarvis. And then Disney didn't like that they used the name Jarvis because it's a Marvel AI, I guess, term. And, you know, facing the threat of, you know, Disney lawyers, I imagine that the, the Jarvis team was like, okay, we're not going to even try. So they changed the name to Jasper. So, yes, that's the Jasper team that you know today. Uh, back then, we went, were even on some calls talking about potentially me doing videos and showcasing how to do cool things with Jasper. Um, then it was Jarvis. And, you know, I, I suppose I, I entertained it for a little while, but it became pretty clear to me that uh, I wanted to do something on my own. You know, I, I, and Chibi was born. Chibi was born to be what shortly AI should have become had it didn't had it not gotten purchased because the conversion AI team at the time essentially quadrupled the price almost and just sort of left it there. And um, that kind of stings a little bit, but you know it is what it is. So fast forward to today and you know, if you've been around for a while, you know, Chibi has grown and changed and grown and changed. And if you're familiar with the term scope creep, then yeah, you could say that Chibi probably had some massive amounts of scope creep. You know, we were adding things like custom uh, templates and variables and all kinds of stuff, then prompt library, then template library and all these you know, we, we, we tested and experimented and tried new things. I won't say that I regret that. Uh, you know, obviously there's a ton of learning that comes from that. The ability to do those things is super powerful. The problem is, is it's really difficult to kind of get into it when you're fresh in the app, right? And so rewind a little bit back to that last editor that was just pre previous to this one this new one that you haven't, I haven't shown in this video yet. Sorry. Uh, I really honestly thought that was going to be it. You know, let's let, this is mature chibi. We're going to go from here. We're going to train showcase videos and do all kinds of cool stuff with it in the community. And then soon, very quickly realized, okay, <laughs> something's wrong. It's too difficult to use still. And that's I, honestly, I think I kind of snapped a little. I not not feeling defeated, not like that, but just kind of, you know what, like screw it, fine. We're going back to our we're going back to our roots. We're going to strip down Chibi to the basically bare bones, the the bare metal, and we're going to make this thing as easy as shortly was. And then if we, if we want some advanced features and the community did, we would add them on in a way that did not impact that simplicity at all. You can turn on expert mode. You get access to doing your own custom templates and variables and using the new memory feature and all kinds of cool advanced stuff, but it's still super clean. And if you don't need all that stuff, you don't turn on expert mode, then you've got an even cleaner UI. So it's super cool. In this video, for the rest of this video, I just want to kind of click around this new chibi, talk about the different things, you know, ramble on in the rambly video series as we do, and just talk about the various things that you see on the screen at the time while I'm going through the different parts of uh, the new editor and, and this even here, this new dashboard. It's not super new. It's mostly the same, but slightly changed up, right? So if you've used Chibi before, you'll notice that the color formatting or the color tags, those are gone. Just added another level of complexity that just wasn't needed. It was cool, but, you know, not too many people even knew how to use it. Got a lot of questions about what do they do? <laughs> so, all right, they're gone. You know, they're, they're not needed, honestly. So they were right here underneath of this filter. But, yeah, still got the filter, the ability to search through all your documents and stuff. And 
And now documents are laid out in more of a taller view than they were before. A little bit more document-like, I guess, if you want to say. Uh, this here is the archive button. If you don't need this document cluttering up your, your document grid, you can click right here and then it will be filed away into your archives area um, so that it's not in your way, but it's not gone. Okay, then we have the, um, the delete button, of course, that gets rid of it. These right here are auto magical tags auto magical because if this grid of documents has a document that has a tag like this one ai writing we got the stories these appear automatically so that you can just click to filter by them now real quick though notice that the way it's filtering is when you click on that it basically puts the word stories into the filter you could just type that yourself if you want to and you can also Either you can click here to clear it, or you can click and remove it, or you can just click here again and remove it as well. Um, yeah, so just a, a nice way of quickly organizing your, your documents. Now, let's uh, just one quick peek at the welcome. I changed this a little bit, and this is probably going to grow a little bit more. Um, dark mode looks nicer. A little bit more uh, in the future. We might just make this into like a beginning tutorial that gets you started a little bit more than just this. The reason that this is here is because when you start a brand new document, you're sitting at a blank document. And some have asked, what do I do? <laughs> so it just depends, obviously, on what you're trying to write. But if you're trying to write like a blog post, you might start with an introduction about your topic or you can even get outlines. Basically, the prompt gives you the ability to use your imagination and be creative. Ask for pretty much anything you want. In fact, you can probably just go just go to YouTube now and find all kinds of stuff about how to do prompts and all kinds of things like that um, to get ideas. And also inside the community, we'll be going through a lot more now that this new editor is, is out. So in your documents, now I'm in, in a dark mode. Uh, let's go ahead and switch it back. So I'm, I'm going to open up one of these. I'm going to open up the portal. And by default, this is probably what it's going to look like for you. And, you know, it it's pretty nice. It's, uh, you know, pretty standard, I would say. I, I would say. Up here, you get some formatting tools. This is the left sidebar. I'll show you that in just a moment. This green dot means that the document has been saved. Uh, this is the word count, and this is the word count goal. I'll show you how to set that. This is settings, and you close the document right here. Uh, pretty standard view of a document. You know, you, you get uh, some headings and formattings and different things that you can put in there, like uh, italics and headlines and HRs and stuff like that but we have this this settings button here opens up this little panel and we get all kinds of ways to customize our document how we like how you like i prefer uh, a more narrow canvas uh, for stories i think i prefer a serif font um, at the zoom that i'm at now this is this medium is fine for the size of the font. We can change the line height. I think standard is pretty okay. We can change the character spacing so the, the letters can be closer or further apart. I like for serif to um, bring them closer. And then we got paragraph spacing. If you want more space between the paragraphs or less, yeah, we'll just keep that about standard. Also for stories, I do like to have indent turned on because it just makes it easier to see the paragraphs quickly kind of roll through them this right here is the indent this one right here is high contrast mode so if you have some sort of vision impairment where the text here just doesn't seem dark enough for you you can click here and that text turns to black so this is as much contrast as we can get um, uh, on that so i'm going to turn that off Next, we have writing mode. Now, this is something that Chibi has had for basically since they started almost. 
the writing mode is well if you've been in chibi for a while you you previously it was more or less a level of creativity so to speak now it has a lot more meaning when you're in article mode chibi is trying to write articles when you're in copywriting mode chibi is trying to be persuasive and write you know ad copy and landing page copy and stuff like that you know if you're trying to do that if that's your goal definitely jump into copywriting mode story mode same thing chibi is set to try to help you write a story and so if you're writing an article and you're in story mode it'll probably work but occasionally you might see chibi start start, start you know wording things in a way that's more like storytelling than article writing and then you'll know that maybe you were in the wrong mode but <laughs> just pay attention to that this mode is saved per document the default mode is article so when you start a new document it will be an article mode but if you're writing a story and you set it to story the next time you open it it will be story still word count goal well that's the number that's right there and document tag this is how you can organize it into tags now down below here we've got a few selectors changers i call them really one of them is super important um light mode dark mode right here pretty standard stuff there this is the background so if you click on that you get a few choices right now we're at this sort of gunmetal gray but if you don't want to have one of those boring texture or boring sort of no texture no imagery type of backgrounds you can switch it up i'm going to go for this night scene right here uh, this one right here, it looks like a shield icon. This is mature mode. When you turn it on, you get this little warning kind of looking thing. The reason that it toggles and changes that drastically is because when you're in mature mode, there's a few tools and things that don't work anymore. But what Chibi is doing is he's taking advantage of other AI model providers and stuff out there to get content that maybe open AI and potentially others, that it, depending on how we, um, mix the the usage of ai model, uh, models out there if if they don't approve of the content like sometimes when you're writing you might get a message that says you know uh, doesn't meet moderation standards and you know for whatever reason we call it mature mode you know some some people might just jump to that means like you know adult material or something like that but it, it it can mean a lot less than that a lot less than you think you know i think the other day i was writing a story and it had like a dragon in it and the dragon was in a fight with a with with the hero the dragon was slain and you know some part of that open ai didn't like and so at that point i couldn't write about it anymore because you know chibi wouldn't or at least chibi wouldn't be able to help me write about it anymore because apparently slaying the dragon in the way it was worded or whatever uh open ai's algorithm had some kind of a problem with it so the ai wouldn't help and if you find yourself in cases like that now you just toggle on mature mode and keep on trucking and chibi will still help you but you'll lose access to things like prompts and other tools and stuff because they use um, the chat gpt api in the background apparently gpt4 is coming soon and if it does then you'll we'll have that probably as well um but yeah you have the ability to write content that normal ai writers out there um, don't really allow for if you just turn on mature mode and this one right here the coffee cup <laughs> coffee cup is normal mode but if you change it to nuclear that's when you're in expert mode before i do that let me change it back to normal mode and then i'll show you this uh, left sidebar here so in normal mode, the left sidebar is basically your notes and the scratch area. You get lots of space to put lots of notes. Scratch is the notes that you basically are, that are shared across all of your documents. So if you put notes into scratch, all of your documents have access to it. If you put, if you put your notes into this notes area, this is on a per document basis. So it's notes that are only for this document. Okay, so that's the left sidebar and the toolbar and everything else that, that's basically all you've got to worry about now to do writing when you're in inside of the editor now you get these these nice little buttons that pop up 
in certain places. Right now at the end of a paragraph, and so Chibi's offering to help continue that paragraph. If I go down a line, I get something different. I get a, a different continue button because in this case, Chibi is going to help continue this paragraph or, or part of the story with by, by creating another few paragraphs potentially. This is how you can do prompts. So you can click it or you can just type slash yourself. And then you can just write in what you want Chibi to do. So for instance, this paragraph up here, um, let's see, uh, peculiar air of unearthly silence. Okay. Maybe I could put in here, describe the unearthly silence and why it's peculiar. And then I could, and then what, well, let me just show you. I'm not actually going to run it, but I can show you what it looked like. So I could say, describe the unearthly silence and why it is peculiar. After I write that, I have a run prompt button. Notice that there is a down arrow there. That's because if I run this prompt, the content is going to be coming out inside the editor here. There is a special command. If I do colon sidebar, then, oh, sorry, that's an expert mode feature. I'll show you that in just a moment. I won't run this for now. I'll just leave it here. And now let's go back and turn on expert mode. With expert mode, we get all kinds of new things up here. But before I show you those, let me show you this sidebar thing. If I do colon sidebar, then you'll see the arrow changes to the right. And that's because when I run this prompt now, instead of the content being written out inside of the document, there's going to be a right sidebar that pops out that contains that content that I can then review. And if I like it, then I can copy it and put it into the document myself. And that's a choice you have simply by typing in colon sidebar. Okay, so let's go back to the left panel here now that expert mode is on. And when I go back to here, you're gonna see more options available to you. We have memory. This is where you can put all kinds of stuff in here that you want Chibi to just know while you work. And it has a certain format to it, a label content pattern. So for, in for instance, like if you're writing like a blog post, you might want topic and audience and other things, you know, you put pretty much anything you want into here. Don't fill it up too much. You put too much memory in here and then you're going to start running into problems with Chibi not being able to use enough context from your actual document itself. So use this sparingly, but if you've got things that you want Chibi to just know, you can pop them in here and label them up and then Chibi will know all your stuff. You know, it might, maybe you've got products, main characters, scenes, certain, just basically anything. Just use your creativity, whatever you want him to know while he writes, you put into memory. Then we have templates. Templates are super cool. Uh, these give you a way to train Chibi to do certain things and do them with regularity with a certain level of confidence that this is the type of content you're going to get back. You can even make him write in a certain way. Um, for instance, this one here, this is a paragraph from keyword PFKW. The reason I named it PFKW is when you run a template, the way that you run a template is you just type the, you type slash, just like a prompt PFKW space. And then that would run my template. Let me go back to templates here. Let me just go here to PFKW real quick because there's also a new variable here. See how it says the rest. So you have PFKW. Uh, it, it takes some keywords and creates a paragraph from them. So here's an example. I'm showing Chibi. Here are some keywords. And this is the paragraph that I would like back from if you had keywords like this. And then I break it. And then I provide the next steps. Well, this right here gives this template a special ability. So it's called the rest because when I go back to here and I say PFKW and then I hit space, I can type my keywords here right after the name of the template. And those keywords are, are every, basically everything that you write after the template name is the rest and it will get used in the template 
feels very much like a prompt, but it's like a prompt that you get to train and, and show Chibi exactly how you want it to work. Uh, so you can do some really amazing things with, with that. So that's templates. Definitely not diving deep into templates uh, in this video, but that's what you can do with templates. Right now, PFKW is toggled off, but I can just click here to toggle it on. We've got variables. This gives me the ability to set things like this. In this case, these are my products, not real products. You know, mostly fictitious. This one's real, but mostly fictitious products. And so that if I ever wanted to use this whole introduction or product description for this fake product called Birdie, I can just use this in my writing or use this in various places where I want it rather than typing this product description out every time. Super powerful for things like copywriters who have to work with a catalog of products and stuff like that. Uh, or even storytellers who want to put some, you know, character information into a variable or something like that. Super good. Leads, much less uh, um, used feature, but it gives you the ability to set leads. In this case, this is a bad example. But you could think of leads as things like transition words or fra fragments of a sentence. And what will happen is those will show up. Let me go down here. Those will show up over here. When uh, you click on this, you get these leads. And remember, I told you, bad example. <laughs> but when you're in an area, you can just click this and it'll put it into the document. And then you can continue from there. So. If you've got transition words that you like to use or even parts of a, the beginning of a sentence that, you know, you find yourself frequent, frequently writing, you can set them up as leads and you can just use them directly from there. All right. So that's the left panel here. you got all kinds of freedom to do all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, and that's what you get when you're in an expert mode. Coming over here, we've got a few more buttons in the top row here. This is prompts. So these are, and if you recall, these are the prompts that uh, you can set up and save and then reuse in your content. So if I take this away and I come here and I click here, Chibi writes in that prompt and now I can run it. Pretty cool. Um, if you have, a, if you have run any commands or prompts in this document, you'll see a history of the prompts that were run. This will hold the, the last 20. So it's a first in last out kind of situation where the last one, when a new one is added, the last one will get removed. If you have prompts that you that are in here that you want to save, there will be a button there that you can click that copies it over into your saved prompts area. And then if you want to create your own prompt, you can just click here, create the prompt save it and when you save it it'll just be here available for you to use if you ever need to edit it you can just click here make all your changes and hit save and you can update your prompts pretty easily now prompts do still have the color tags so you can still filter them by a certain colors feedback was that they let like kind of liked it for the prompts area here so it's still there um now this one here is the right sidebar I was telling you about. And you can kind of think of this as basically a history of all the things that have been loaded into this right sidebar. And I'll show you that real quick by basically running one of the commands that's in this menu up here that I, you haven't seen yet. So let me just go back a step. You have, you have the inline menu that appears. Whether you're on the end of a paragraph or on a new line, you get this to work with. You also get one, a different one when you select content. So now that I've selected this, I have an option to copy this to my notes just directly. I'll click on that. It says copied. I'll just show you that really fast. Here it is in my notes. I can do a review of this content. This is where Chibi is going to try to you know, review and analyze the text and give you some ideas and suggestions that you can use to improve it. Summarize, well, don't need too much of a description of summarize, but it doesn't make sense to try and summarize just a paragraph like this. 
But this version of Chibi, this summarized tool, is able to do tens of thousands of words in one go. And it's super cool. And I've got some upgrades coming to this uh, relatively soon. I got some ideas I want to try and implement. And then we have rework. So a lot of talk about rework. This is like the new tool on the town, right? It's like rework gives you superpowers. It's really, really nice. Basically, you select some content. You click on rework. You get this pop-up box here. And it, it says... And sorry that it's popped off the side here. That's because I have indent turned on. I'll get that fixed. All right. So when you click on rework, you get the ability to tell Chibi to do something to that selected content. Uh, to include a bear is just a kind of nod to storytelling. It's a little bit of a joke, but in a way, I could run this. So what I could do is like, let's say that this paragraph, I wanted to make sure that Chibi was, was include, had included a bear in it, discussion of a bear or something. I could click here, type in to include a bear, hit run, and Chibi would include a bear in that conversation or in that passage. It is very, very powerful. Gives you the ability to fix things. So maybe if you had some content that came out, it wasn't quite right. You can select that, click rework, tell Chibi how to fix it, and he'll fix it. You can even tell him things like write this in two words or write this in one sentence, you know, all kinds of different things. Rework is a very capable tool. I think you're going to love this. Like This is a an expert mode thing. I'm going to switch off expert mode here for a second to show you what this looks like. So when you have normal mode on, you get condense and expand. Those are the same condense and expand that were there previously. In expert mode, that's not there because you get rework. And rework can do condense and can do expanding and all kinds of, well, basically anything else that you want. So that's super powerful. You definitely want to check that out. But when... When you do run something from here, for instance, review or even rework, because you notice here there's this two. If you toggle that on, that means that when this when this runs and Chibi, you know, makes the changes that you ask him to, instead of writing that, re, instead of replacing that selected content in the document, he's gonna put it in the sidebar for you to review. I'm not gonna run that, but let's run review here real quick. And what happens is he's going to analyze this and then he's going to open this sidebar with a review in there. And sometimes it can burn, <laughs> but GB is honestly trying to help you out. So don't think too much into it. Just look at it. And if it's, if you feel like it has some content that would help you um, improve your, improve your content, then perfect. So that says the content lacks specificity and fails to engage the reader. It's overly dramatic and cliched. Uh, sentence structures are repetitive, lacks any character development. Obviously, this is one paragraph. So, you know, it's not going to have that full context to be able to uh, provide a better review than that. But it is pretty nice. So uh, a couple things about this review. Um Notice that it says review here. You get a copy of this to your notes. So when you when you click the, the here, all this review will go into your notes. So history is stored per document, but it's not stored in Chibi. It's stored in your browser cache. It's not a permanent. This is not a permanent record. It's stored this way so that if you did, you know, if you left the document and you're working on something else and you come back to that document, that when you open this, it's still there. It's not gone. And it will still be there for, for basically forever until, unless you use a different document or you end up clearing your browser cache or something like that. So if you have things in, in here that you do want to keep, you know, because not everything will be, right? It'll be just temporary and you'll be like, okay, fine. I can just leave it there. If you, you can click here to completely remove it from even from the cache. Uh, click here to copy it to your notes. Notes are saved with the document, so that's when they become permanent. 
Um, but yeah, that's how this works. This one knows that it's a review. Let's just do a summary here real quick. Let's just, just do summary of the entire document at once. We'll do summarize. Uh, I'm just going to summarize what 2009, so three, almost 3,000 words. All right, so we got our summary, um, include encounters with Bigfoot, a stranded mariner from the realm of Ozamat, a princess carried away by a golden wind. Yeah, a lot of interesting stories in here. So there's the summary of that. So that's pretty cool. And you notice that we have both of these available to us. So that's why it's a bit of a history of the things that have been run that go to the sidebar. Same thing if I were to run a prompt. Um, let's just do tell me what the above means. And I'll do sidebar so that we get it to kick out into the sidebar here real quick. So I just run this. And I'll show you that, uh, well, it'll open the sidebar. This one was a was a, a prompt, so it'll actually put the prompt there too. This is the prompt that created this. The author paints a vivid picture of a person walking through a forest, feeling a sense of trepidation and unease. So you get a little bit of what is this. This is the content that was created. It's stored here in this history. That's pretty nice. I can always come back to this if I ever needed to. So I ran a prompt. So if I go to my prompts area here and I look at history, tell me what this means, sidebar. So I have this in my, my history now. If I click here, it'll copy it to my, my prompts area. And that makes it um, a permanent you know prompt that I can always use whenever I want to. Because if you remember history, eventually after 20 items, this will get pushed out the bottom of the list and uh, won't be available to me anymore but i don't need that anyways so let's just get rid of it okay so i guess this is what going on 40 minutes been rambling pretty good i will say that i really like this um the ability to make these kinds of changes we even have a monospace uh font here and it's just nice to work in you know I like changing up the backgrounds based on, based on my mood. Um, I know that uh, some don't don't like to have these. That's why there's a series of four ver you know different shades of gray. Got basically a dark resin black, um, gunmetal, charcoal, and a lighter lighter gray slate. And um, there might be some more colors coming. Uh, over time, but there's definitely going to be some more backgrounds coming over time. So stay tuned for those. And yeah, this is the new Chibi. I hope that you find this really powerful. It's a uh, the the stuff that's going on in the background here. You know, you you can't see it, but the Chibi NLP engine that runs this is just crazy. It powers several of the tools that you saw. Things like, um, especially here, re the review, the summarize, the rework, all of that has, you know, the, the Chibi NLP engine has some effect on. It just gives Chibi this really crazy ability to do things that just no other tool can do. Um, there are some tools out there that will summarize content but do it in a way where it's in a sense it's basically chopping up the content in like 10,000 character blocks and then summarizing each 10,000 character block uh, one after another so you could think of things like word word tune read or I think that's what's called word tune reader um, quillbot stuff like that it, it does like a chunking of the content the Chibi NLP engine basically gives you the ability to do a summarize on everything um, and get back a sort of singular result. Let me show you where we, where we got it. Let me just do a search here. So I, I pulled down the, um, oh, it's got to do a conversion here real quick. I pulled down the Clinton Wikipedia article and it's really long. It's 13,000 words. 
it goes on and on and on, right? As, as any Wikipedia article for a president would. Okay, cool. But I'm not going to read all that. So let's just do this and let's click on summarize. And let's let Chibi give me a paragraph that tells me the highlights of, of this. You know, I don't, I don't need everything. Covers various events and achievements of Bill Clinton's presidency. He received an honorary degree from University of Oxford, re-elected. He proposed a health care reform plan, signed the Defense Marriage Act, played a key role in negotiating Good Friday Agreement, um, relations with Monica Lewinsky, you know, so on and so forth. So there's our summary. That's uh, a pretty powerful tool. Now, I want to show you something else here, too. So William Jefferson Clinton, born August 19th, 1946. Let me change this to 1956. And let me just make sure that I'm in article mode here real quick. So I changed that to 1956. That is wrong. Let me select this. Let me click on a review. Let me see if Chibi will notice that the birth year is wrong for Mr. Clinton here. You can get some minimal level of uh, facts. Uh oh. He didn't catch it this time. He caught too many other things, it looks like. Well, so in this case, Chibi is talking about ways of improving that content. But let's see, because I'm pretty sure I've done this before. Now, we can't guarantee fact checking, um, you know, like perfection. Still have large language model limitations. And maybe 56 is just close enough. I think I changed it to like 76 or something like that. But yeah, he detected before that it was wrong. Yeah, he's not catching on that. Well, that stinks. I was going to show you something really cool about it because uh, it does seem to catch factual mistakes um, semi-regularly. <laughs> Just not this time, apparently. So, yeah. But the review is set to kind of help you identify things that um, maybe just aren't aren't correct or, you know, show you things that maybe you want to double check before you publish. And again, all AI content, always double check it before you publish, you know, things like years and dates and times and all that kind of stuff. Very easy to not have correct. So, and as you can see, even, even the AI can miss it, but um, yeah, I will definitely be working on tools or improvements and trying to make sure that, or trying to bring in things like fact checking and stuff that is more reliable. Um, there's, this is, even though that this is the UI, actually, I guess I should talk about that for a second. This is the UI. This is Chibi going forward. Um, oh, and, and by the way, memory, it, the way you use memory, you, you, you put it, you put the memory into the memory area like this, and then turn memory on and turn memory off. This gives you the ability that if something is in memory is affecting your writing, but you don't want it to at that moment, you can just turn it on and off uh, with one click like this. Okay, so yeah, this is this is Chibi, right? You get this nice clean UI. You get the ability to jump in anywhere and do your prompts. So I'm in the jump in anywhere and, and do your prompts and stuff. And it it's just a really nice, smooth, clean experience. Now, expert mode gives us a nice situation. It gives me the ability to add some uh, interesting new features and we can put them in expert mode. If it makes sense, I mean, there could be some things that come to normal mode too. They're, you know, not saying that expert mode, it gets everything. But if it has even a hint of a learning curve or 
being semi, you know, something that you'd have to spend some time to get into, it'll go into expert mode. And this gives that this that's a really nice capability because even you can see here, I mean, it even in expert mode, you know, things are relatively clean. It's the same, right? It's not too much different. You've got a brain here <laughs> and then three more icons here. That's really the biggest difference. Because when you're when you're on your content and you're you're um let's see what's going on here. And you're, you know, when you're in your content and you're doing your work, you still get this the, the menus here. Um I, one thing, oh, I missed something. This prompt button, when you're in expert mode, becomes a box like this. And this gives you the ability to use multi-line prompts. So if you've got a bunch of things that you're doing in your prompts and, you know, you, when I say multi-line, I don't mean like if you do slash, if you do slash here and your, your prompt goes on and then drops down to the next line because you keep typing that same long prompt, that's fine. That will work even in normal mode. But what I'm talking about with, with this prompt box is that you can actually hit return. So you can have something here, something here, here, like this. You can have a multi-line prompt um, when you're in expert mode. So pretty cool. Okay. Anyway, this is this is the UI going forward. And we're going to work within this. We're going to always strive to keep it clean to make sure that this is just a nice, simple document view for you to do your work in, but let Chibi have all that magical power to help you craft something that is fantastic for you or for your readers. And expert mode will be that place where we can try things. And who knows, maybe in the future we could have an experimental mode or something that gives us the ability to put things in there that are experimental before going mainstream, so to speak. But, um, I just thought of that just now, so don't hold me to it. And uh, thanks for being with me on this rambly video where I just walk through all the different things that are in this new editor. Don't let the simplicity of this fool you. The ability, you know what? I forgot to mention that the Chibi NLP engine, this is the superpower of Chibi Almost, that, that engine that's powering like rework and summarize and review and all that stuff. It also gives Chibi the ability, like this is 13,000 words, right? If I go all the way down here, like way far, 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 far down here, and I'm trying to write, Chibi can see all the way back to the beginning of the document. Now, of course, he can't use all of it because there are limitations with AI models. You know, they only can accept a maximum of 4,000 tokens, which this is way more than, than 4,000 tokens that this is probably, I don't know, 15, 16,000, maybe probably more tokens, uh, maybe a little bit less, maybe about thir 13, 14,000 tokens here, right? Triple or more than you can actually use with a large language model. But Chibi has the ability to see all the way back and make the proper use of everything that's back there so that you can continue to write about your content um, regardless. So it's a very powerful feature. No other tool in the market has this. It runs in the background. It's automatic. You don't have to do anything. And uh, yeah, I hope that you found this really interesting. I hope that you're, you know, if you, if you've, if you're using Chibi and you're doing some really awesome things, please take some time to share in the community how you're using Chibi. Let's learn together and we, we can make this thing really awesome for everyone who's uh, involved. And again, thanks for hearing me out. And until next time, take care.